All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds, who says in his noble book, and say, do as you will, for Allah will see your deeds, and so will his messenger and the believers, and you will be returned to the knower of the unseen and the witnessed, and he will inform you of what you used to do. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped by Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger who says in his noble hadith, if the final hour comes while you have a palm cutting in your hands and it is possible to plant it, then plant it. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family companions, and upon those who follow his guidance till the day of judgment. It goes without saying that loving, defending, and pushing countries forward to achieve progress are from the most important and sublime teachings of Islam. For this reason, a true believer feels a great honor for his genuine belonging to his country, his hard efforts to build it, and his diligent work to realize its progress and flourishment. In truth, the civilizational and scientific progress realized by any country is the product of sincere people whose hearts are full of love for their countries. Thus, they exerted their utmost to work hard and enormously benefit their people and countries. Our beloved Egypt in actuality deserved this, if not more, because it is in the heart of the Arab and Muslim countries. Not only that, but it is also the shield and the sword of the nation, and it's a strong fortress that shoulders the responsibility of combating terrorism and facing challenges. That's why defending it and working hard to achieve its progress and advancement are religious and national duties. Since Egypt is the cradle of all civilizations and divine messages, it is the country whose mention is recorded in the Quran together with security and safety. Allah Most High says, enter Egypt, Allah willing, safe and secure. <coughs> There is no doubt that progress, advancement, and flourishment secure the dignity and honor of the Ummah, as well as respect for it by others. Yet, building countries is never realized by mere words, dreams, or wishes, rather by considerable efforts that are exerted in this regard, as well as making use of the factors of building and the reasons for achieving progress and advancement. Being aware of the challenges is one of the most important reasons in this, in this regard. In truth, being aware of the value of your country and the challenges it faces as well as the surrounding dangers require that we should be aware of the challenges we face. Because without realizing these challenges, we cannot develop successful solutions. It goes without saying that being aware of the value of the country, the legitimacy of the national country, and working to achieve its progress and advancement are all among the most important cornerstones for building a, tr a strong country. They are also the most important pillars that support belonging to countries and preserving their fortunes. Also, awareness of the importance of countries necessitates that we should correct the misunderstandings that terrorist and extremist groups try to implant in the minds of people. Taking into account that these groups based their ideologies on the attempts to cut off relations and shattering trust between people and their rulers and officials. Even though the teachings of religions called for honoring rulers of just characters. In this regard, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, Glorifying Allah involves showing honor to a gray-haired Muslim and to one who can expound the Quran, but not to one who acts extravagantly regar regarding it or turns away from it and showing honor to a just ruler. Not only that, but Allah the Almighty also makes makes the just ruler among the seven kinds of people who will be protected from the scorching heat of the sun on the day of resurrection. Saying, seven people will, uh, Allah will give them his shade on the day when there, would, where there would be no shade but the shade of his throne on the day of resurrection. 
and they are a just ruler, a young, a young man who grew up with the worship of Allah, a person whose heart is attached to mosques, two men who love and meet each other and depart from each other for the sake of Allah, a man whom an extremely beautiful wo woman seduces for illicit relation, but he rejects her offer and says, I fear Allah, a man who gives in charity and conceals it to such an extent that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand has given and a man who remembers Allah in solitude and his eyes become cheerful the just ruler as you see at top is on the top of this list one of the most important foundations of building countries is to sacrifice for its sake true patriotism is not a matter of chanting slogans and reiterating words rather it is a way of life that seriously considers the challenges facing the country that feels the joy upon realizing its goals and that is all ready to sacrifice for its sake defending protecting and sacrificing for countries are national and religious duties upon everyone living on their lands and sheltered sheltered with, with their heavens that's to say that loving countries is not confined to feelings and emotion, emotions only. Rather, it should be practic practically translated into hard work and good behavior, beneficial for the individuals and the society. Therefore, sacrifice for the sake of countries is a must, so that they should re remain strong. Belonging to countries require that all their citizens should feel proud of them and unite to preserve them. Because the stability of countries is one of the ultimate objectives of the Sharia that aim at constructing the earth and promoting the status of religions and enabling people to practice their rituals. Therefore, jihad is legislated in Islam only to defend countries and word of injustice and aggression. For this reason, Allah Most High promised those who sacrificed their souls for the sake in, uh, of defense of their countries a higher rank saying indeed Allah has purchased from the believers their lives and their properties in exchange for that they will have paradise they fight in the cause of Allah so they they are they kill and are killed it is a true promise binding upon him in the Torah and the gospel and the Quran and who is truer, truer to his covenant than Allah so rejoice in your transaction which you have contracted and it is that which is the greatest attainment <coughs> one of the most important factors and pillars of building countries and civilization is hard and precise work Islam highly appreciates the value of work and even considers it an act of worship if no better in rank Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him described it as jihad in the cause of Allah Kaab ibn Ujra narrated that a man passed by the Prophet peace be upon him and his companions so that he was active and diligent which is why they said O oh, messenger of Allah had this hard work been in the cause of Allah the Prophet replied if he had been working to seek provision for his little children he is in the cause of Allah if he had been working to seek provision for his aged parents then it is in the cause of Allah and if he had been working to seek the provision of his own self and to protect it from evil then it is in the cause of Allah yet if he had come out for showing off he is in the cause of Satan so both religion and patriotism require exerting our utmost to work hard and to produce especially when we take into account the fact that our religion urges us to work hard and to be diligent Allah Most High says he who created earth death and life to test you as to which of you is best indeed and he is exalted in might and forgiving and says O oh, you who have believed, when the Adhan is called for the prayer on the day of Juma, then proceed to the remembrance of Allah and leave trade. That's better for you if you only knew. 
and when the prayer has been concluded, disperse within the land and seek from the bounty of Allah and remember Allah often that you may succeed. But when they saw a transaction or a diversion, they rushed to it and left you, O Muhammad, standing. Say, what is with Allah is better than diversion and than a transaction. And Allah is the best of providers. Prophet Muhammad said, nobody has ever eaten a better meal than that which he has earned by working hard with his own hands. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Prophet David used to eat from the earnings of their manual labor. In this connection, we stress that religion, the religion of Islam, not only asks us to work, but also to perfect this work. Allah the Almighty says, Indeed, we will not allow to be lost the reward of anyone who did well in his deeds. Prophet Muhammad also said, Allah loves when he, one of you does a work, that he perfects it. One of the most important factors of building countries and civilizations is science and goodwill. Building needs knowledge and experience and specialization. Pondering over the Quran, the purified, purified Sunnah leads us to the conclusion that they both highlight the importance and the, of the availability of efficiency, sufficiency, and trust. Telling us about Prophet Yusuf, peace be upon him, Allah the Almighty says, Yusuf said, appoint me over the storehouses of the land. Indeed, I will be a knowing guardian. Also, he most high tells us about the daughters of Prophet Shuaib, who said to him about Prophet Moses, O oh, my father, hire him. Indeed, the best one you can hire is the strong and the trustworthy. That's why Prophet Muhammad war warned us against assuming powers for inefficient people, stressing that this is one of the signs that the final hours coming is imminent, saying, when the power or authority comes in the hands of unfit persons, then wait for the hour. <coughs> for, this, for this reason, he, peace be upon him, used to employ his companions according to their knowledge, efficiency, and ability to shoulder responsibility. <coughs> That's to say that neither nepotism, nor kinship, nor love had nothing at all to do in that regard. Abu Dhar, may Allah be pleased with him, said to the Prophet, peace be upon him, will you not appoint me to a public office? Abu uh, Huraira, Abu Dhar says, he stroked my shoulder with his hand and said, Abu Dhar, you are a weak man, and authority is a trust on the day of judgment. It is a cause of humiliation and repentance, except for the one who fulfills its obligations and properly discharges the duty attended upon him. He, peace be upon him, also said to Abdul Rahman ibn Samur, Abdul Rahman, do not ask for a position of authority, for if, the, if you are granted this position as a result of your asking for it, you will be left alone without God's help to discharge the, the responsibilities you are entrusted with. And if you are granted it without making any request for it, you will be helped by God in the ch charge of your duties. With that said, I ask Allah for forgiveness for me and for you. <coughs> all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all worlds. I bear witness that there is no God deserving to be worshipped by Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, companions, and upon those who follow him till the day of judgment. Muslim brothers, the serious consideration of the moral and behavioral values is one of the most important cornerstones in building countries. In truth, any country or civilization that's not founded on the values and, mor and moralities carry for sure the seeds of its collapse since its very perception. <clears throat> 
from the Islamic perspective, morals are of a cardinal importance because they enable Muslims to attain higher ranks and make good deeds heavy in the balance on the Day of Judgment. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, nothing is heavier on the believer's scale on the Day of Judgment than good character. For indeed, Allah Most High is angered by the shameless, immoral person. Also, when he, peace be upon him, was asked about the major characteristics that lead to paradise, he, he said, fearing Allah and good morals. For this, re for this reason, the Prophet, peace be upon him, set good morals as the criterion of perfect or imperfect religion, saying, the most perfect man in his faith among the believers is the one uh, is the one whose behavior is most excellent and fear Allah wherever you are do good deeds after doing bad ones the former will wipe out the latter and behave decently towards people good morality is urge people to be characterized with good characteristics like mercy loving the good for others seeking to achieve people's benefits and achieving the public benefits of the country and its citizens away from selfishness because our purified religion is mainly based upon loving and wishing good for others not on greediness misery or selfishness justice is one of the cornerstones of building countries and civilizations in actuality these countries are founded on justice that never differentiates between people in terms of rights and duties which is the command of Allah where he says indeed Allah orders justice and good conduct and giving to the relatives and forbids immorality and bad conduct and oppression he admonishes you that perhaps you will be reminded they said Allah most high grants help to the just country even if it may be of disbelievers yet he glory be to him does not grant help to the unjust country even if they are believers now I invoke Allah to secure our country and to guide our leaders to what achieves the benefit and progress for our ummah